What is up guys? Tonight we are gonna talk about wheel and tire setups and what I'm running on each one of the cars. And I'm gonna let you know a little bit about the reasoning behind my tire and wheel selections and kind of what led me up to this point where I'm at now in my life. So, before we talk about each car individually, let me let me kind of give you guys a little bit of a, of a backstory for what led me to where I'm at now. So, my real relevant driving experience all began with the Miatas. Uh, when I was just getting starting off and actually really kind of cared about cornering speed and corner exit and like putting down like power like coming out of a turn, like all the aspects of like, of like making a car corner as hard as it can started with the Miatas. Um, before that, I had front wheel drive Civics. Uh, I was kind of like a Honda fanboy in high school and I just, didn't really care about anything other than straight line. Although I did enjoy like driving spiritedly, I just didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just kind of an idiot. So when I bought the red Miata, it was a just a stock 91 1.6 NA. And I ran it on whatever tires like came with it when I bought it, but I fell in love with that. Like I, I, I felt something special was there. And it was like something that I had never experienced before and I was like, and I just kind of started falling in love and I wanted to like learn how to drive. So that was the car that like really kind of like got things going for me. Um, but then I, I, I did something and I, and I bought my first set of like rims and tires for it and, it, and I went with Falcon Azenis and I think they were RT615s at the time. Like the first version of the 615 was the, the set of tires that I got for it. and. At the time, I loved it because the thing, I could just throw it into a corner as aggressively as I wanted and it would just bite down with like no drama. And at the time, like oversteer, oversteer like kind of scared me a little bit. Um, so I didn't really complain. I was like, well, this is great. Like I could just kind of keep flooring it and like doing whatever. Um, not too long after owning that was when I picked up the NB and I kind of did the same formula. The NB had a little bit more torque, a little bit more power. Um, and, it, and you know, it's still with that type of tire on there, which again, I put a Zenny's on uh, because I thought they were like the fucking best thing in the world at the time. Um, you know, it, 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 it drove very similar and like that was great. And then I started autocrossing and I started getting into like running our compounds. I was running these things in stock class. So like, it was like, you know, just a shock setup with like with like Kumo V710s was typically my my R compound of choice for local events and then you know and I became competitive like after I kept going and um, and I and I started winning like local events and stuff. Um, fast forward a little bit from that, that's like kind of like how my my racing career really kicked off. I started uh, racing carts. They were it was a it was a class called Tag, which was touch and go. Um, it was a single gear 30 horsepower cart, which was like pretty damn fast, even though it didn't have gears, which, you know, for a guy like just getting into it, only have an autocross experience, I probably would have gotten my ass handed to me in the shifter classes. Um, so the touch and go class was plenty fast. Those things like hauled ass and they like beat the crap out of you. That's when I really started to feel old. I was 23, I want to say when I got into it. Um, from there, that, that trickled off into doing track days uh, with the NB. That was like a big change up. It was like, wow, I can go out there and hot lap this car for like 40 minutes straight and like not even break a sweat versus like getting the shit kicked out of me on a 15 minute session in the cart. Um, so I kind of like wanted to move in that direction more. And that's when I got into racing Spec Miata. Um, Spec Miata went through several tire changes while I ran. Uh, originally it was RA1s and then uh, Toyo trip, uh, R888s were an, were an optional tire that was allowed. I ran both. Um, and then they switched to Hoosiers after the, uh, the meltdown at the, the uh, nuclear plant there in Japan from that tsunami, because uh, they couldn't fulfill the orders anymore. So the uh, SCCA switched to Hoosier, which actually I didn't really like the Hoosiers because they, they heat cycled out pretty quickly. RA1s was probably the best tire you were able to get for that class. You could just run those things right down the cords and um, they were fast right up until they, until they were showing cords. So that was a great tire. Um, but anyways, going back to this all, it was all max grip. I was always like max grip, max grip, max grip. And then I kind of got to the point where I was like, this is a little bit boring because it gets boring when you can just floor a car all the time. And, and I'm not saying for everyone, this is just me. I got bored 
being able to floor a car all the time. Um, once I started exploring big slip angles and like really making the car move around, that's where I really fell in love because I like that balance of being able to drive fast, but also being able to play with the balance of a car. And I like controlling the rear with my, with the, my gas put pedal and my steering inputs. To me, that's like the most fun that I have when I'm driving. And now at this point, I kind of consider myself more of a retired race car driver. I don't see myself getting back into it um, because the dreams of being a, a pro race car driver and all that just kind of went down the shitter being involved in it long enough if you make it in racing that is so awesome but it's you almost it's it's almost like winning the lottery to actually like make it and, and have like a very successful career doing it. there's not very many guys that are paid um to race professionally that's the that's the real sad reality of it so i, I my my priorities in life like started changing um as far as that was concerned but also the direction that I was moving in with the cars. So now my whole thing is the balance. I just want that balance. I don't want to be like an all out like drift car because they're, they're like a joke putting down power like kind of like in, in a lot of situations. Now I granted, I'm talking like amateur level stuff like yeah, okay, pro drift cars like they, they do grip because they do these like ridiculous entries at like 100 miles an hour and all that stuff, but that's not me. Um, I like being able to pick or choose. I do a lot of my driving on the street. Um, so it's nice to be able to drive neat and tidy if I want to, or if I'm like kind of just, you know, testing myself and want to push myself a little bit, but it's also nice to be able to exploit a chassis and let the car move around because that's, that's a lot of fun and you feel heroic and like, and it's great when you have a lot of tire grip, it makes doing that very difficult, especially in a street situation where you have a lot of variables. Cause let's face it, like street driving is pretty dangerous. Um, so I try to be very, I try, I try to mitigate and minimize the risk as much as I can when I do my street driving. So part of that is having a tire that allows me to exploit the car without having to go stupid fast. Because with the, on a low powered car with, with higher grip tires, you have to use speed and momentum to like kind of get the chassis moving around. And that can become dangerous because you're just going that much faster. So if you exceed that grip, when you exceed it, it's a little bit more violent. You have momentum, you're going for a farther ride if you can't recover. So it's, that's kind of like the balance of it all. So let's talk a little bit about what I have on the cars and where I'm at now. Start with my beloved NB Miata. Now I run a set of 16 by eight. They're positive 38 offset, Advin RG2s on here. Um, it's a square setup. I can actually run a more aggressive tire setup as you can see with the camera that I run. They are sunken in a little bit. Uh, probably gonna add a set of wheel spacers to this just to make the wheels a little bit more flush. Um, but for Miatas and the smaller cars, I don't really like running anything bigger than an eight inch wide wheel because the cars tram line more. They just kind of drive a little bit more crappier overall. Now, when I bought these wheels, I originally ran a set of 215, 45, 16 Kumo XS. They're rated at 180 tread wear. They're very grippy. Um, on certain track services, like the Lime Rock go-kart track, which I have a lot of footage for, you can see me unsticking the car pretty easily. And a lot of that's just because the surface level, the surface grip levels of that track are lower versus the street. I have a harder time unsticking this car on the street than I do on that track. After I burnt those out, which they didn't wear out um, tread wise, they actually delaminated when I was hooning them around at Lime Rock because I think after like so many heat cycles of cold and hot, they just kind of, they just started chunking apart once I really st started stressing them. So now I run a set of uh, Dunlop Dereza. Um, these are DZ102s. And I think they're like 460 tread wear or something. But again, this is just a street tire. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this a competition tire and I wouldn't even try to do any sort of competition level stuff with these. Um, it's a great tire for the street and the power level of the car. It's totally exploitable, but like I could still, you know, if I, if I, you, you come across and you at your typical, like whoever enthusiast, um, when let, I'm not trying to like boast or anything, but there's a big driver skill, um, you know, the, 
difference there. So it's very easy for me to, to, to leave somebody even on these tires. I have plenty of grip to keep the car tidy on the street, but um, there's not too much where like I can't unstick it at this power level. So they're a pretty good compromise. Now, given that I do run these, I wanna, sw I wanna pick up a second set of wheels and tires uh, more for like the local competition stuff that I still do. And I'm gonna run a set of 200 Treadwear class tires on it because I think those are great as far as being able to drive to like a track event, run them without having to do a wheel or tire change and then drive home. So next setup is my Turbo Miata. Well, which is no more turbo. Would you guys saw that video? Engine's gone. Um, so the front height is a little bit higher now because there's no weight pushing it down. But these are a set of work equip 01s. They're 15 by nine with a positive 10 millimeter offset front and rear. Square setup, um, they are sitting on a set of BF Goodridge G-Force Rivals. These are the original Rivals, not the Rival S's. And they are a 225, 45, 15 front and rear square setup. Uh, you could see on the nines, they're not really, they're, there's maybe a little tiny bit of stretch, but they do feel, they do fill this out really good. The lip isn't like protruding obnoxiously or anything like that. Um, this is a pretty good fitment for the, for the nine inch wheel. I don't particularly love the way the nine inch wheel drives and that's just going back and back comparison between this and the NB with the eight inch. It's very noticeable when you hop out of one into the other. And the other part of that is the offset. This is a very low offset. You're sticking the wheel out much, much farther than stock, especially for a car that was designed with a 14 by five and a half wheel with like, I don't know, I think it was a positive 45 offset. Tiny, tiny wheel and tire combo. You're really changing the track of the car when you push it out with these wider wheels. And, um, and, that, and that affects the way it drives. It just doesn't drive as nice as the NB. So that's why I'm saying I don't really like anything wider than an eight, but because of the power level this car was making, and because of the look with the flares, uh, I sort of need something like that. So there is some compromise here. So just be aware of that. As much as nice as these wider wheels and stuff, as nice as they look, there is compromise that comes with them. As far as the tires go, this is a 200 Treadwear class tire. Um, on the street, these, were, these did a great job of putting down power in first and second gear with like minimal wheel spin. These are kind of heat cycled out now. They still have plenty of tread. But um, as far as as far as the amount of grip that's left in them, they are like there's nothing left. They just had too many heat cycles, and and that's it. There's there's they're, they slide around more. Um, I actually enjoy these the most now because I can exploit this car more on the street without it being dangerous. When these were at, when these were in their prime and they had heat in them to get these moving around, this car was definitely a handful and definitely dangerous on the street. Um, be just because of the amount of grip that it had. As far as the suspension setups go, this and the NB are pretty identical in terms of coilovers and bushings and everything. Um, so they hand so it was pretty interesting to develop them both and like kind of see how the differences are. So that's how I, I kind of gotten to this point. Um, with the rotary setup on this, I'm probably still gonna run these just because they do have adequate grip. They, these probably still have more grip than the when I'm running on the NB. Um, even though they're heat cycled out, but I wouldn't I wouldn't use these for competition anymore I would pick up a second set of wheels and tires with um, a fresh set of 200 treadwear for for competition use Moving along we'll keep the we'll keep the Mazda flow going here FD So this still has a set of Kumo XS um, They are 180 treadwear it's a 255 4017 tire square setup front and rear. The wheels are Enki RPF ones. They are 17 by nine and a half. Positive 38 millimeter offset front and rear. This is almost a perfect, perfect, perfect size for a stock bodied FD. And as you could see, they come out nice and flush, but they don't stick out too far. Um, I didn't even have to roll fenders, which is what something that I didn't want to do on this car because I'm trying to keep the body as preserved as possible. Um, the only issue that I ran into with this is that the fronts on both sides in here rubbed on the fender liner a little bit and wore it away. But other than that, um, it, it's held together really good. Now this car um, is making much more power. This is, this is 417 at the wheels. Um, I will say this though, with the suspension setup on it, and these tires, when they have heat in them, I can put power down really well in first and second with minimal wheel spin. 
Uh, these are kind of getting, these are a little bit aged now, so they are heat cycling out a little bit. As, as with all these higher grip tires, they only have so many heat cycles. And pretty much every heat cycle uh, is, is a slight degra degradation in, in grip. So, um, good tire combo for the car at this power level. I think that I wouldn't go any less grip on these. So when I replace these tires, I'm going to stick with a 200 Treadwear class of tire for this car um, just because it's 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 a little bit of a it's a little bit of a more difficult balance because off boost this car doesn't have much power but when boost comes on it has a lot of power so if I'm out of the power band it's hard to like make the car move around as much as I would like to but when I'm in it I can I can manipulate it on these tires so I may try for something slightly less aggressive maybe go for something like in the in the like closer to a 300 treader, but I just don't know what there is right now offhand. And that's what I've been running on this car, and I and I don't, I wouldn't say that these is, this is a bad combination by any means. I've been very happy with it overall. Uh, and just to kind of give you guys a power reference, so we we're talking before, NB is 185 wheel horsepower, naturally aspirated. The Turbo Miata was 254 wheel horsepower before pulling the engine um, turbocharged. So you can kind of see the trend here as lower the power, uh, the less aggressive treadwear rating, higher the power, more aggressive treadwear rating. So that's what I've been running on the FD. Coming over here, these two cars actually share the same tires, but different wheels, wheel combos, obviously. Um, there was a deal, and I, there's no particular reason why I picked the tires that are on here. These are Continental DWSs on both of these. There was a Black Friday special on tire rack or discount tire, I can't remember which one. Uh, and I just bought two sets of them because I needed I needed tires for both of these and I was just like, you know, what? I'm going to give these a world. They're 360 tread wear. For the BMW, these tires work really well um, on the street. As you saw, if you watch the, the, the BMW Z4M versus E46 M3 video that I put out, these tires are a complete joke um, as like a track tire. And that was Lime Rock's go-kart track, which is a much lower surface grip. And you could and you saw the car was just it was just it was just laughable trying to put down power a lot of fun though i had a blast filming that day but hopping out of this and hopping into my friend's e46 m3 which he had pretty fresh dunlop dereza um, star specs on there there was a huge difference in the way the cars behave both at front end at front end and rear grip uh turning was much sharper on his and again it was all just comes down to the tires our suspension setups are actually very similar and so are our alignments with more more camber in the front than rear for for good power down corner exit um but again the the, the tire grip was really the limiting factor that day so i'm going to try to recite these wheels off offhand without butchering them these are apex that's the brand apex their ec7s is the model and i'm running a oh geez i always forget the size it's 18 by 9 what i want and i want to say a plus 31 offset in the front and this is a 235 um, 4018 Continental uh, Contact DWS. I think they're DWSs. DW tuned, Extreme Contact DW tuned. I don't know. There's something along that line. 360 tread where those are the ones. And then in the rear, this is an 18 by nine and a half with a positive 22 offset. And you could see here, I get a really nice concave. Um, I have to I have to say the, the fitment on this car for a stock fitment I'm able to run a pretty aggressive ride height on it front and rear and I have no rubbing no issues um, BMW kind of clearances the inner fender lifts pretty good for like a more aggressive wheel fitment I mean you could see here's fender and tires like right there I mean they're 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 nice and flush there's no there's no real obnoxious poke or anything like that. I love the fitment on this car. It's probably like the best stock body line fitment I've ever gotten out of anything. Um, and I love these wheels because they, they can pass for OEM. They're a different design than the, the typical CSL style wheel because they have uh, more rounded spokes versus the CSLs are very flat. So they're a little bit different. I mean, a lot of people just think they're CSL wheels, but I just think they look very elegant. They're nicer than the, the five spokes that come on here from the factory. And um, because they accept the BMW Rondell center caps, they can like pass for like an OEM wheel. So that's why I picked them up. And plus they're, they're pretty reasonably priced somewhere around, I think I paid 1280 or 1300 for the set shipped. 
Whew, that was a mouthful. All right, S2000 AP1. So these are Advan RG2s. And if you guys haven't noticed this by now, RG2s are one of my all time favorite wheels. I had to hunt everywhere to find these. Um, and I bought them used. Uh, it wasn't the best experience because they came from uh, a very popular supplier overseas and the packaging was shit and they got all nicked up um, in, in, in transit, but it is what it is. They are no longer made, so I, I took them and I just kinda, you know, I'm just running them as is because I love the wheels. So as far as the fitment goes, these are 17 by seven and a half with a positive 48 or 45, I don't remember offhand, it's one or the other, front offset. In the rear is a eight, uh, 17 by eight and a half with a positive 50 offset. I swear to God, these this wheel size is like made for the S2000 by Yokohama. Um, and this is another very like stock fitment that I am super, super proud of. Uh, S2000 uses very high offset wheels from the factory. So anything that's like a, a nine inch wide with like a 45 offset like sticks out pretty good and, and definitely requires fender rolling. I actually did not roll my fenders because again, I love the S2000. I'm trying to like not bastardize the body on a lot of these cars if I can help it. Um, but this, this wheel fitment for stock body lines, look at that, bam, it's beautiful. Um, I'm able to run the camera that I want to run. I don't have to run too much in the rear to clear. Um, and it, and it, just, it just fills it out perfectly. It looks very good in my opinion. And I just love these wheels on the S2000. The, uh, the silver color there, look at that front fitment. <laughs> it's like just perfect, very perfect. These, these two cars, best, best stock body line fitments that I have. But um, the silver just complements the, the silver stone really well. I'm excited to paint all this shit this year to kind of have it uh, more matched. But um, these tires and this grip level for the S2000 work okay. Again, off, off, the peak power band, the S2000, is a little anemic. It makes its power from like seven to 9,000, especially with the cams that they have on here. So these tires are, are a good match for this car on the street. I have fun with it. I can, I, can, I can get some yaw out of it, get some slip angles out of it without it feeling dangerous. The S2000 is a car that doesn't really like big slip angles. Um, and, and so it, it, we kind of have this like, this relationship where we fight a little bit with each other, but uh, she she kind of she kind of works with me now, so I can with this with this combination and this alignment I can I can kind of drive the car a little bit more how I want to. For competition, I'm actually going to be doing a lot of track day stuff with this coming probably this year. Um, so I am going to pick up another set of wheels and tires, and I'm just going to run you know, you guessed it 200 treadwear class tires and drive to the track, run it for the track day, drive home, and uh, all all's good. So. <laughs> Last but not least, let's talk about my daily here, Project RX-8. Uh, if you guys watched the suspension and wheel and tire install video, these are a set of Enki Kojin. This is their street tuner series. Um, these are 18 by nine and a half front and rear with a positive um, 30 millimeter offset. Now. This fitment, oh actually before I talk about the fitment, tires, and <laughs> the tires are a set of ATR, um, Achilles ATR Sports, and they are 18, um, I'm sorry, 255, 35, 18 front and rear. If you guys have noticed, I don't like running stagger tires. Why? Because I don't want understeer. Uh, less tire in the front usually means less front grip, so that means front brakes breaks traction before the rear does because you just have less overall mechanical front grip. Some cars like the BMW and the S2000 are kind of set up to have a little bit of a stagger so that's why I'm tolerating it. The S2000 though I think I do want to switch to a square setup. The BMW gets by um, kind of okay with it. They, they really did set it up to run a stagger setup. I shrunk the stagger though over stock and the same thing goes with the S2000. It's a shrunken stagger. Oh and I forgot to mention the S2000's Tire sizes, they are 235, um, whatever, 40 or 45, 17 front, and 255, 40, 17 rear. So it's a shrunken stagger over stock, and the same thing goes with the BMWs. So this wheel fitment is very aggressive um, for a stock-bodied RX-8, and there were some trade-offs with it. 
This, if these were a positive 38 millimeter offset, the fitment would have probably been perfect, but they do poke out more. Um, you can see here in the front, if I come flush with the lip, I definitely have, or the fender lip, I definitely have some poke here. So it is more aggressive than what I would have wanted, but you could not get these wheels in any other size. Uh, and, and then and without having this face, I wanted the face because I love five spoke wheels, especially on a daily because they look good and they're easy to clean, real key. Um, but I love the aggressive concave face of these wheels and I think it matches the, the weird lines of the RX-8 really nicely. Um, but I do have to run a more conservative, right, here's the rear fin and you can see all that poke right there. Um, I do have to run a more conservative ride height and I do have to run a little bit more camber uh, just to kind of get these to work. So you will see that there is some fender gap here. It's definitely much lower than stock. Mazda loves their, their monster truck ride heights out of the factory. Um, these are definitely lower and it still allows for suspension travel. The RC has a lot of travel built into the suspension. Um, so I'm able to I'm able to still utilize that and and you can really still haul ass over bumps which that's kind of a cool thing for a street car is being able to like drive like an asshole cornering over bumpy roads because let's face it public roads are bumpy and not have the car get upset. RX-8 suspension is is magic already and it doesn't get upset over bumps but um so this setup to me works works really well but you could see like this is this is a pretty conservative uh, versus all the other cars. But either way, I think I think it just skirts by, uh, still looks aesthetically pleasing, because like at a distance here, you know the wheel gap you can't even you can't even really account for. You can't see it, so it just kind of it kind of blends in. Probably because the car is black and the tires are black, so it just kind of hides that a little bit. But as a daily, I'm gonna end this. As a daily, even though those are Chinese or Korean or whatever the hell those tires are and they were cheap as hell, I just, I just got them because I was like, this car is so anemic, um, even like all around, it just doesn't have a lot of torque. It doesn't have that like, that kick in it. So I didn't want it, I didn't want a grippy tire at all. I just wanted something stiff that wouldn't delaminate if I was drifting it. And so far they have been, they've exceeded my expectations. I paid $285 shipped for that whole set, 18, uh, 255, 35, 18 tires. Oh, and the tire, the aspect ratio is also key to making that fitment work because that is smaller than any of the less, of the, the 40s or 45s and similar width tires. Um, when it's warm out, that car does not unstick. It does not have enough juice to get it upset. So they, <laughs> they work best when it's raining. They, they're all over the place when it's raining. That's probably why they're cheaper is because the rain traction sucks. But I love them in the rain. I have a lot of fun in this car in the rain. The Arc State in slip angle is one of the best, best cars. It just does not do anything stupid. It is so blissful and balanced. Um, when it's cold out and, and there's no tire grip, I can, I can exploit it too and I just love it. Um, so in that regard, these tires have, have definitely exceeded my expectations and I, and I love them. Um, I don't see the RX-8 as like a real cornering machine. It's just kind of too heavy versus the other Mazdas. And the way Mazda engineered the suspension on it, it it's like just a great, great, great all around car. Um, it's really magical. I don't know if it produces the raw grip that say like a Miata can or uh, an FD RX-7, but they, Mazda just did magic in that suspension. It just works so well. Um, and it's beautifully black, balanced, especially if you have the, the right tire combo. So that's why I run those tires on there for my daily. I wanna be able to hoon that thing as much as I can. I, I still can't hoon that as much as I can, but it's close. So that's why I'm running those tires. And I would, pro I would actually buy them again because of how cheap they are. They don't really wear tread wise. Um, they're great. So guys, that is what I run for tires. I hope that answers some of your questions. I get a lot of questions about my wheel and tire combos. If, uh, if there's anything that I did not cover and you would like to know, definitely ask me below. I'll do my best to help you out, but that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, done.